start, y'all are welcome to do anything to keep going. It just gets my energy up. Okay. Eden, just be, we're officially starting. Just be spiritual boom. I have Colleen and Miles here with me. If y'all can do a brief hello before I go into more talking, say, say hi to the watchers and the listeners, please. Salamat Jah, that's Syrian for be in joy. Hello. Is from the hello, that's, of the I'm Miles, Miles that, that's Canadian meaning hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, already today, um, how do we even start with today? Knowing that we are on episode 62 of this podcast and it's all about the Great Awakening and we've had patriots on the show. We've had people who see things from a biblical perspective. There's always a spiritual side. And now we're going to go a little bit deeper, knowing that P and Cullen are going to be on the show again next week, that they've given us a beautiful introduction into the Palladians. And Nyla from episode 49 also gave us a brief introduction into the Galactic Federation. Yet I want to share with everybody, okay, there's a huge awakening that is occurring on our earth. And this isn't just evolving us as human beings. This is letting us know the depth of things that are happening on our earth, which also is related to the galaxy and the bigger picture of the galaxy that we are not alone, that, that there is so much more. So if, if you'll just be here and open your mind and expand it, because I already know from these two, so we've just met, yet we've had email conversations for a while. They are dedicated to getting this information out. So I'm so glad to have them on the show and I will get with them for just in just a minute. Okay, let me take a breath. Okay. Also want to share again, uh, my meditation demystified Zoom class, which I never thought I'd be doing a beginner meditation class again. So here we are. And I feel it is so important to learn how to meditate, to take your meditation practice to a deeper level because of this great awakening, to have a foundation, to be cool with all the ups and downs. It is so important. So April 13th, 20th, and 27th from 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. This is 2023. Register with me, Eden, at EdenJustBe.com. Okay, now, whew, let me introduce these two beautiful people. Colleen Marshall and Miles Simon have been serving the Planetary Activation Organization, known as the PAO and Galactic Community for over 30 years. The PAO exists to inform star seeds and light workers about our connections to the beings on other planets and the universe around us. And to prepare for a new conscious raising reality and the eventual disclosure and first contact with the Galactic Federation. All right. Yay. Yay. Okay. So let, let me ask you guys both, how, how did you, knowing that you've been doing this work for a, a long time, how did you both become aware of the Great Awakening, the Golden Age? Okay. Who would like to start? I'll start. Um. I, I'd have to say that it's started in 1993 and um, I had a, what, what's called a dramatic wake up. So it seemed natural, but a voice came in on a Saturday morning. I was working corporate, wore the high heels, had the nails done, you know, all that. Good person, but not on the path at all. And uh, this voice came in and said, go to a metaphysical bookstore. And I thought, oh, I was dreaming. And so I didn't pay attention. The next Saturday, go to a metaphysical bookstore, even louder. And it seemed natural. That was weird because that hadn't happened before. But I went, oh, okay, where is one? You know, and so I went and I met. Okay, so had you there. never done spiritual work before? A meta Nothing at all. And you just heard that voice and said, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Proceed, please. I love that. <laughs> I know. I Anyway, so I went and I met my first teacher. And so she brought me along because um, she had classes and, you know, the thing where you open the book and that's the message for you that day. So she taught me all those little things, like if a book falls down, then it's meant for you to pick up. And, and then she gave me Reiki one and two. She said, I'm giving you both because you're on the fast track. Okay. 
so everything's new and I'm just going like this, you know, and I, and then um, she had Sheldon Nigel come one day. And now there were 40 people in her living room instead of 15 doing a meditation. Now there were 40. I go, oh, gosh, now what have I gotten myself into? What's this all about? And then Sheldon started talking about the photon belt and the Galactic Federation and the Ascension. And then the whole room disappeared except me, his wife, Miriam, and him. And we became a triangle. My head opened up. Light codes came in. And I knew stuff <laughs> that I never knew the day before. And I didn't even know the word light code at the time, but I talked to my, uh, the lady, Barbara Light, my first teacher, and she said, oh, those were light codes. Cause I said there were different geometric figures coming into my head. Well, that's all information. So sacred geometry is all information. So I was getting this download and now I knew things. I called my sister the next day to tell her and she goes, who are you? <laughs> and I go, I told you, my head opened up and blah, blah, blah. You know? <laughs> so, um, so when this process was that, happening for you, were you just like, oh, okay. Or was it shocking or just, again, you just kind of knew I I'm just going to move forward with this. It was shocking, but it was also show up. I need to show up. So I just kept t putting myself in those situations to learn and to grow and, and, it was shocking in, on one level, but not on another. Mm -hmm. So then in, after I met Sheldon, um, and I just knew that the three of us were connected, and then I offered to help them in whatever way I could, but I was still working. And then um, my angels came in in October of 93, and they said, well, actually, it was galactic beings, but I thought it was angels because I didn't really understand the whole galactic thing yet. And so uh, they came into my room at four in the morning and they, I was reading a book called uh, um, Atlantis and, uh, about Atlantis and about the 144,000 people. And when I read that, I raised my hand and I said, I'm one of those. It's just like you get triggered and you hear things and you go, yeah, that's me. A star seat. Yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. A Syrian. That's me. <laughs> you know? And um so that was uh, wonderful. So they came in and they told me, you will you won't work corporate anymore as of February 1st. Oh my gosh. Um, you're going to be a healer and keep going with your project. I wasn't sure what the project exactly was, but, and then they, and in my head, I said, oh, angels, I thought you'd have wings. And of course they read all your thoughts. So they right away said, oh, do you need wings? And then they <laughs> put wings in. So I said, okay. Well, then I realized it was galactic beings and my team and all that. But um, uh, so that was my my initial wake up. Wow. Okay. We'll get back more to Sheldon in a moment. Okay. Miles, can we go, go to you? Colleen, are you good? Yeah. Okay. That was really neat. All right. Miles, what about, what about you, mister? Well, uh, my first uh, awakening came when my mother once told me when I was a small boy, I think Christ is a spaceman <laughs> and something triggered in me. And some years later, I started looking for some kind of spiritual path. So I started with some, a, a movement called Gurdjieff. And then that was sort of about Sufism and that sort of thing. Okay. And then I belonged to the spiritual brotherhood for quite a number of years. And then I heard a comment about the spiritual brother with Hood saying, that's an old frequency. And that got me kind of pulled away from that. And I'm a saxophone player. And I met a fellow once at a cultural congress. We were there at the congress and everyone sat around in a circle. And they we all were, there were 10, 10 rooms and there were 30 people in each room. And we were all asked to introduce ourselves. Well, I brought my saxophone out and I said, I played something. I said, that's who I am. So I walked out in the hallway afterwards and this fellow came up and said, are you the guy who played the saxophone? And I said, yeah. And he said, let's, let's play. And he was a piano player. So we played and it was like magic, this wonderful mm -hmm. music, spontaneous music, heavenly for me. So shortly after I went down to visit him in LA where he lived 
and uh, he was a piano teacher. So while he was teaching piano, I was waiting around for him so we could play some music later. He said, here's a book I'd like you to read. And he gave me the book, Bringers of the Dawn yes. by Barbara Masiniak. I'd never even known what a channeler was at that time. I had no idea there was such a realm. I, I was always into other forms of spirituality. So when I got back to Vancouver, I went to the biggest metaphysical bookstore to see if I could get more books like that, because I was really fascinated. And there was this light shining in my mind on a book called You're Becoming a Galactic Human by Sheldon Nidal. And it was almost like it jumped off the shelf to me. So I got that book and I brought it home and I must have read it six times and I started crying and I just felt oh. like, my God, what is this? This is and it was like something really resonated in me. So then um, I really wanted more. And that a week or two later, a, a really good friend of mine was in Bellingham, Washington. He was sitting in a restaurant and saw a poster on the wall that said, you are becoming a galactic human. And Sheldon happened to be there. And so he taped that for me. It was like a coincidence. Why was my friend there? He knew nothing about it. Right. So he brought that back. And after that, I looked to see if he had a website. And it was like stale. It was like stuff that was a year old. So uh, uh, we we uh, contacted the, the people. It wasn't the PAO at the time. And I said, look, I'm a graphic designer. Can I do your website? And they said, sure. So that's how I got started with the PAO, doing their website and their graphics. And now I do like the questions and a lot of the concepts with Colleen. We work together to present the webinars. And uh, at a certain point, we did like 91 webinars with Sheldon. And then uh, when Sheldon was unable to uh, do webinars anymore, Colleen and I started to uh, find our way together. And we've, for the last five years have done webinars every month with with various guests so that's kind of my my journey wow okay let me add into there that I was a graphic designer in a in a past life well not a past life in this life before all of this as well uh, so to to understand Sheldon started the PAO correct yes okay and I I read about his passing which was he just passed in 2022 correct he actually hasn't passed. Oh, he but, hasn't passed. Okay. No, but he's in a convalescent home. Okay. Because okay. it was, I couldn't take care of him anymore. The needs were too great. Okay. Do y'all want to go into um, a read up about him, how this started for him and what has happened with him, like a, an energetic attack, if y'all want to go into any of that, but maybe to, to say how this started and how y'all, well, obviously how y'all became connected and how, how you're both very passionate now at continuing and growing this. All right. That might've been a multi-tiered question, but yeah, y'all take it from there. Um, okay. Well, um, oh, uh, so Sheldon, so Sheldon um, was actually contacted ever since he was a little boy um, and he went up into the ships and was educated. They, they would put him in this little chair that um, then they could put coordinates of any time or space, uh, time or location. And he would go there and be like a fly in the wall and watch it in real time because everything's happening at the same time, right? It's past, present, and future all happening at the same time because of the outbreath from God. And um, so he could he could do that. Well, his favorite was uh, the Constitution. So he wanted to go see when they were signing the Constitution. So that's one of the things where he traveled to. So he had that type of an education. They would tell him, Sheldon could read encyclopedias when he was five. So they would tell him, go to the library, because remember, no internet yet. <laughs> Go to the library, read everything you can on, let's say, crystals. Then he would come back and say, okay, I, I read. And they'd say, okay, here's the real truth. Here's the expanded truth. Oh here's the spiritual truth. Here, you know. So he never learned everything that we learned about history and everything. He always learned the truth. 
So he didn't have to unlearn things the way we all have to unlearn and go, oh, it didn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So um, he had quite the experience. And then when he was about 14, he said, you know, this is just too jarring for me. Uh, you need to leave and let me be. <laughs> and in high school, he was actually doing uh, some college courses and, and things because he was a scientist and he did uh, free energy machines and uh, he created them way back then, but then it got confiscated. No way are we doing that yet, you know? Wow, right. So that was one of the things. And um, so th that was his background. And then they said, okay, we'll leave, but we'll be back um, in the 80s because you've got a mission because you're a galactic ambassador representative. So he's like, hey, I stutter. How can I possibly be in front of people? But he kind of got over the stuttering and, and all, and, and he was always good around people. But he, anyway, so that started him. And um, so the Galactic Federation um, has been in his life pretty much the whole time. Um, let's see, what, what else do we want to say about that, Miles? Well, um, a few things that you didn't tell them was that his sister went up with them initially. Oh, yes. And the way they oh, they wow. were they were summoned to the ships were they were little kids in their room and they saw these moving lights and they were asked, well, uh, why don't you think of the way you'd like to see our lights move? And I think they created patterns so that they could kind of be take part actively in how the lights moved. And 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 I think didn't Sheldon Colleen say that when he went up into the ships, it was like being in bed and kind of being kind of beamed up in a similar way somehow to Star Trek, something yeah. like that. And, and, and they uh, teleported him. He literally yeah. physically went. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the other thing that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was on a Syrian mothership. Well, most of his guides are Syrian, uh, so yeah. it still had Galactic Federation, which is over 200,000 different types of um, star beings and star nations. Um, but his particular um, um, group was the Syrians, because that's where he's from. He's a Syrian starseed. Okay, let me stop you guys for just a moment. All right, we are three normal people. <laughs> kind of normal but yes we are normal people sitting in front of you and talking about what might be considered wild stuff y'all this is not wild this just is and I, I love like Colleen's story too about how this came to be I was in the corporate world I had my nails on same thing for me I was in graphic design advertising and things were started to be off balance so I started taking a meditation class and that opened up God and spirituality to me and now right when COVID started, that opened up the great awakening piece of it. And now I am, I am excitedly moving into more. So I am again, very happy for these guys to be here today To And it's not only opening up to you guys, but it's opening up it to me as well. Do y'all mind at this point describing the Galactic Federation? What is that? Galactic Federation is a conglomerate of, um, uh, over 200,000 star nations, and they're dedicated to just our galaxy. The Galactic Federation that we're talking about is just for our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, and um, they're here to assist us in our evolution. They can't come in and do it for us. They can't save us, or, but they are assisting us. By, for sure, in many, many ways. And I can go into the, many of the ways that they are assisting us. Um, for instance, um, a lot of times there's an earthquake and there's supposed to be a tsunami afterwards and all of a sudden there's no tsunami and everybody just goes, shh, don't talk about that on <laughs> mainstream media. Uh, that's because the Galactic Federation working along with the um, earth elementals uh, would stop it so that there would be less damage but they can't stop the whole earthquake. They can't stop everything from happening because we have right. to learn and and um, rise up ourselves. But hey, they so can may I sure. interrupt and ask a question? So for, for both of you guys, for someone who's listening or watching this and just like, uh, I just can't believe this, what, what would you say to them before we continue? 
Who would like Miles? Why don't you start with that one? Well, um, I've never seen a spaceship, and I've never seen a a person from the Galactic Federation. But I've dreamt about the Galactic Federation. I've dreamt about these things, and they were like real. I've been on ships in my dreams. Mm -hmm. I've been given a lot of insights through my dreams. I was levitated in my dreams. I had insights. I saw our life's uh, contract in my dreams. It was kind of like uh, a sea of air and um, ethereal kind of movement. And I saw that picture of my life contract. So do you believe in dreams? Do you trust dreams? And I'll, I'll share a story with you about the impact of dreams. And maybe this will help people who don't believe. I had this very profound dream that I was on the top of a mountain and I was being chased by monsters, but I knew the monsters. I was familiar with them. I've dealt with them. I knew how to handle them. And then I looked at the other side of the mountain and there was this mist and I knew there was a cliff there. And I said, well, do I want to stay and just face the monsters I know, or do I want to take a chance and do something different? So I ran to the edge of the cliff and jumped oh. and I landed in paradise. Oh, I like it. <laughs> and so that's sort of the way I would explain how I feel about whether you should believe in something or not. Uh, in order for you to move forward in life, you have to trust what I call the random factor. You can't, as a musician, for example, you want to play with notes and you want to play everything structured. Or do you want to learn how to improvise? When you learn how to improvise, and if you go on a stage playing with jazz musicians you've never met before, never rehearsed with, it's like bungee jumping with music. You just go for it. That's liberating. So those are my experiences. Okay. Colleen, Colleen what would you add to that? That was beautiful. Thank you. Um, one of the things is proven that humans are not indigenous to Earth. This is a scientific fact. So therefore, we come from the stars. <laughs> so therefore, if you don't want to believe, you need to do some more research. Okay, so evolution and all of that stuff. <laughs> well, there's evolution, but it came from a different planet. <laughs> right. And and what we learned about it classically, it's so different. That, and let me add into this. So uh, my last guest... Uh, really neat to share this with you guys. So um, he was a professor, a researcher, a very intellectual mind. He was an atheist before he started doing a book on Atlantis. And through that, he could not deny the truths of everything, the truths of Edgar Cayce and all these visionaries and spiritual seers, which he didn't really believe initially. And now his perspective on spirituality has totally changed. So I like to add that in there too, because it is like the more you open yourself up, the more fluid you are, the more you jump off this cliff, realizing it really isn't a cliff that you're going to fall down into and go splat. You are going to be carried you were going to be shown beautiful beautiful things all right colleen can we go back to the galactic federation please thank you and wonderful and what do you want to know okay uh, i think uh where we left off was talking about how many different um to, okay. correct me if i how many different star systems or, or how many how many beings are related with this or a, a part of this so um I happen to be a Syrian as well. So a Syrian star seed, what does that mean? It means that on the planet, because we're multidimensional, so we have beings from the same soul on different, uh, every dimension up to the 12th dimension. So what we're in only has 12 dimensions, but there's a whole lot more dimensions. But the construct that we are living out is 12 dimensions. So I just go with that because some people go, well, there's 200 dimensions. Right. Yes, but we're only speaking of this right now. We're not ready. Most people aren't ready for everything else that's beyond that. <laughs> you know? So the Galactic Federation, there's the Syrians. Now they're more about spiritual counselors and uh, they were a part of Lemuria. Um, and then uh, then it kind of got into the more the Pleiadians later. Now the Pleiadians are scientists. Then there's the Arcturians, 
and their healers. So these are all different uh, planetary systems. Then there's the Andromedans, their inventors and scientists and the Herculeans. They're very spiritual and they're also innovators and um, organizers. They're organizers. And Sheldon often thought that they would be the ones that will come to help us to reorganize how um, society works, how government works, because it'll be completely different than how it is now, of course. Yeah. So um, there's, and there's many more, but those are the main ones that are working with the uh, planet Earth's ascension. And um, let's see, what else? Can you um, explain what a star seed is, knowing that you talked about it? Well, just go into more depth and into because there are so many people that are star seeds, and a lot of people are waking up to that. And it was just stated in the mainstream media that word exactly a couple weeks ago, again, with the attempt of downplaying it, making anyone who says they're a star seed to discount them as well. Um, a same thing with QAnons and there's, again, anything that's coming alive that is true, they're going to do anything to quell it and make it not seem that way or to make people seem like they're crazy. So what, what is this, what would you say is the definition of a starseed exactly? Starseed is uh, someone who from a higher dimension decided to come to earth for the ascension. Star seeds have a little more DNA active because there's two strands of DNA most of us have, everyone has. And there's the third strand that is a bundle of 10 more strands. And a lot of star seeds have a, an extra strand working for them. That's why we carry a different frequency wherever we go. We don't have to talk, we don't have to do anything. Our frequency is a harmonizer frequency. So wherever we go, we're harmonizing the lower frequencies with the higher frequencies so that people can feel more harmonic and more peaceful. And we do this without even knowing. Uh, I mean, some of us know we're doing it and some of us do it a lot more consciously. Um, you know, like uh, when I go into a store, every step it's love, light, love, light. So I'm broadcasting all the time and not absorbing. When I go to in a healing, I absorb what they're, what they're feeling and everything so that I can identify it and then help. So that's a little different about me, but so this, uh, the Galactic Federation, um, when you think about it, if we're, what happened with earth? In Lemuria times, she was fifth dimensional. Then there was the fall into third dimension. Now we're on the rise back into the fifth dimension. That has never happened before. Planets have gone from three to five and beyond, but they haven't gone from five to three back to five. So what happened in Atlantis is they, they started separating spirituality and science and they went more science and wanted to push this spirituality and say, we're the gods. And so that's how they started the fall in consciousness. And then God, the creator, prime creator, he said, or, or he, she said, okay, you have X amount of time to, do, to experience that. Because everything's about experience. And when the dark and the light merge, which is what they're happening right now as we transform the dark, then a greater wisdom is born. Because light is wisdom. What light is information. Light is so it's the creator being uh, learning as we learn what God is not, and we find our way back to the creator, then that's ascension. Mm. Miles, do you have anything to add with that? I'd like to that just, too much. Yeah, I just would like to say coincidentally. This month, our monthly webinar in April, we're going to have a special guest, Debbie Solaris. And one of the things we're going to be talking about is understanding our starseed nature and origins. It's going to be the focus of our webinar. We even have a picture of a person 
that I did as a graphic designer <laughs> that looks like what a star study might be doing on, on our website promo piece. Plus, uh, Sheldon, if you go to our website, we have a place called You're Becoming a Galactic Human, and there's a webinar all about star seeds on there. So there's a plus, he's written a book called Your Galactic Neighbors, which talks all about some of the main people who are from the Galactic Federation. He describes what they look like, what they eat, whether they sleep or not, whether they have bathrooms or not, that sort of thing, what it's like if you're a fifth dimensional being in the Galactic Federation. It's really interesting. <laughs> Wow. And to tag onto that, I'm going to make sure that y'all's link is down, um, down in the comments. There's so much there, so much information. And I've also signed up for the webinar on April. It's April 23rd. Uh, of course, I'm Eastern time, 3 to 4.30, my time, Pacific time. Is that right? 9 to yeah. 10.30? 12, 12 to 1.30. Thank you. 12 to 1.30. And it's $20. So just to know that amount already. So I, I'm very excited about that. In terms of y'all's job in waking people up, how are you going about that besides talking to me? <laughs> Miles? Well, one of the ways we do it is that there are many different people who are star seeds or uh, indigo children or whatever we are that makes us awake. And we have these people on every month with their stories and their adventures. And I would like to say something about people who don't trust information. Sometimes two different people will talk about the same thing in a different way. But sometimes we have to take into account that there are different dimensions. And some of our guests have told us that there are different worlds that exist at the same time. So somebody might be tuning into a frequency. It's like a radio station. You, you play a radio station and you both have the same radio, but you're getting a different frequency from that radio. So we don't want to be too hard on people who say things that seem to contradict because we're all getting things from various dimensions and various realms at the same time. And that's the big thing that confuses us. What I find is that, and where my star seed nature comes in is, I like to think of myself as a galactic anthropologist. <laughs> so I'm walking around earth and I'm sometimes when I'm driving over one of our bridges and I see the mountains and the cars and, and the chaotic madness of this city that I live in. And I think, what am I doing here? I don't belong here. This doesn't feel good. This, this feels like a primitive society. So you get those feelings when you're star seeds. So those are some of the things that I think about sometimes. I, I wanted to add one thing about star seeds. Then there's the light workers and there's the people who have been on planet over and over because they've been in the wheel of um, reincarnation and star seeds have not. So they usually like I've had four lives on planet Earth and two of them were really in um, Atlantis and in Lemuria and Lemuria I was 5D so you can't really count that one. So really this is my third life on planet Earth at, in um, Earth's uh, 3D existence. It doesn't, it, we're usually old souls. Otherwise we can't be a star seed. The rest are light workers and, and uh, earth dwellers who have been on the wheel of reincarnation over and over. So they've had hundreds and thousands of lives even. And that's the difference. Even though technically we're all star seeds, technically because we're not indigenous to this planet. Right. Okay, well, let me let me ask this question for those that are really struggling because there's there's a lot that is coming to light that is uh, evil, horrible, um, very distasteful for lack of a better word, and knowing that we are in the midst of of, of lots of deaths that are coming from um, certain certain things that have been injected that people have allowed to be injected into their body. What message of hope, I'm going to use that word because that's a, like a bridge to, to what is going to be next. What message of hope would you guys give to people in terms of what they might be seeing right now? 
in the darkness and being caught up in the darkness? How would you, how would you advise them to, to continue to elevate? Okay. Well, um, to raise your vibration all the time. Uh, so it's, it's not to deny what you're feeling. It's to observe and actually feel it and actually claim it. A lot of people go, don't claim it. No, claim it so that you can transform it. If you're in fear over paying the rent because everything's so crazy out there, you've lost your job or you had a good education and now you're making $15 an hour and you can barely make ends meet. All these people are having these types of problems. So it's really important to keep our vibrations high. And that's not always easy when we're experiencing some of the um, ugliness of the planet. Uh, right now we're in the fourth dimension and that's where everything that's been hidden comes up to be exposed. So that's what we're living through right now. And that's why it's so like, what? Why is it? so ugly, so horrible and everything. Well, because it's been that way for a long time, but it was hidden. And now it's up for us to transform, whether it's our personal life or whether it's part of the planetary uh, system as well. Become, think think uh, locally, or no, act locally, think globally, <laughs> right? So, um, yeah. Okay, Miles, well, yeah, would you add anything to that? Well, for years, we've been subjected to what I call psyops or information uh, misinformation. And we weren't aware of it, partly because we didn't have the internet. And then we got the internet and it grew into social media. And with social media, we became really confused because we were getting people with all their fantasies. We we're getting people who were giving us propaganda. And we were also giving people who were giving us truth. And one of the things that I've learned just to look at my own life in a simple way, for example, I'll give you an example of what I mean. I call it the random factor. If you want to sit around being a victim, you're always going to draw negative energy to your life and then you're going to have negative results. But you have to think, oh, I'm being looked after. If I just open myself up and surrender to the fact that my life will move forward if I'm positive, it generally will. And I'll give you an example. For a very long time, we've, my wife and I have had our hair done with a lady who comes to our home. And a couple of months ago, we found out from her husband that she had an illness that was so great that she couldn't do hair anymore. So we wondered, well, what are we going to do? And my, my wife has a lot of allergies, so we can't go to hair salons because of the chemicals and the fumes. So there's a little market that we go to in our neighborhood called the Robson Market. And there was a little cubby hole where this fellow was doing hair. We were thinking about him. But every time we walked by his place, he wasn't there. And then we wrote down his phone number and I brought the paper home and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I said, we're being blocked. This is the random factor. Then the next day, that night, I told my wife, Rhonda, hey, uh, Leslie, one of our neighbors in the building, uh, maybe we should ask her because she used to be a model. She'll probably know somebody could help us. We, the next day, she comes walking by the lobby just out of nowhere. I said, Leslie, do you know anyone who can do our hair. She says, my sister does hair. She's been doing it for 40 years. Oh my gosh. And she even comes to your building already. So she set that up for us. And within a week, we got our hair done. But then here's the end of the story. The next day after we got our hair done, we walked back into the market where we thought we might have that original fellow. And there was a sign up business for sale. Oh, <laughs> there you go. So that was definitely so not supposed to happen. This is a perfect example <laughs> Of what I'm talking about, if you surrender to the random factor, things happen. And we waited two months. We had to let our hair grow, and we just had to trust that things would work out. We just surrendered to it, and that's how the story went. So if you can do that in life with simple things, that's my advice to people who are having or being the victims. 
try to try to live your life using those types of examples with simple things. Right. So try to live your life, not being the victim again, uh, yeah. the, my mentor that I work with is also, you know, again, with, um, money crashing and, you know, how horrible things could be. What do you want it to be for yourself? Do you want it to be horrible? Do you want it, you know, knowing that we're going to need to go into this yet being still being of it yet, not it being being in it but not what am I trying to say what's yeah. the what's the phrase be in the world but not of the world yes and and knowing that if you're going to carry this higher vibration that again the whole point of it is to move out of fear all right let me let me ask you guys this all right so one of my challenges right now and I think this I, I've had lots of big challenges yet I feel like this is this is one this this is one of the big biggest okay so I'm having some issues with my eyesight right now Okay, so I had a crazy infection like seven years ago. So I have black spots um, on the left and right side of my body. And then starting just to not be able to see all that well anyway. Um, yet knowing that I see things, you know, in my work and as a spiritual advisor, or whatever, I, I see things very clearly. And knowing that as a creator, I can fix this or I can make this. So it is one of the biggest challenges because everything I see is not clear out here in the world, but everything I see internally is clear. So I, I just, I just want to throw that out. What do y'all have any advice on that? Or I think this is a, is a great story for listeners as well to know that you can be something can be thrown in your face that you really have to work in. That's literally in your face. I open my eyes and it's in my face. Yeah. So to work on that and to keep the vibration up and to trust my creative ability and all that. Uh, yeah. What would y'all say to that? <laughs> I'm looking for any help that I can get. <laughs> well, I, I have a really bad right eye because I spent years looking at slides in a light box. So I'm, I'm like a cyclops right now. I have one good eye. My <laughs> wife has progressively bad eyes and we go to a healer who does medical shigong and she gives us visual uh exercises to do for our eyes the eyes are connected to the liver and the kidneys and what she does is she gives us these visualization exercises and she uses a nikola tesla machine oh. to bring in a frequency from the universe she calls it because we each have a universal frequency that will heal us if we can get quiet and say what's the right frequency that i specifically need to help me heal this particular problem and i once was in a focus group with a lady her name was Jeannie fitzsimmons and she talked about eyes and she said those of us who wear glasses and those of us who get bad eyes especially if we wear glasses she said chances are something happened in your childhood where you were trying to protect yourself and so you wear glasses like a shield and i was bullied when i was a kid and that was my problem so that's when i had to wear glasses so there's a lot of information out there where instead of going to your optician or yes. whoever there are ways to use the frequencies and some Tesla machines to reverse eye damage. Uh, it doesn't happen instantly, but you have to know that it's something that can be done with yes. perseverance. Okay, thank you. I will that, persevere. That, Go ahead. That is a hard one um, because, um, okay. Uh, last summer I contracted the flu and then I didn't get better. And so I had what they're calling the flu long. And I'm not used to that. I'm used to, yeah, you know, you might get sick or something here and there and a week at the very most, mm -hmm. you know, a cold will last or whatever. So this is months and months. And I'm like, I'm doing everything. I'm eating the right thing. I'm taking all the right supplements, blah, 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 blah. But I really didn't know what had happened. Not really. So, you know, you had to keep doing the, re I had to keep doing the research on that. And then finally I found out what it was so that I could finally attack it from that 
viewpoint. And it's hard because we know, especially as healers, we know that it really can be instantaneous. It's mm -hmm. possible. Right. Because some of the ones who have uh, multiple personalities, one wears glasses, one does not. One has an accent, one doesn't, uh, you know, and so we know within the same body, you can literally ha not have to wear the glasses or to wear the glasses. So when we know that information, we're like, how come I'm not doing it? And then you think you're doing it wrong. And, you know, and, and you have to kind of bypass all of that. All those things that you just said, that is exactly what, yes, I completely yeah. understand. Yeah, I've been struggling. I'm just now getting better. It finally, I got the right people and the right whatever information that I could attack it from the right viewpoint. Right. You know, perspective. Okay. Well, speaking of that, is it um, appropriate to talk about what happened to Sheldon? If you think your audience, I don't know. Is that a scary part? Um, so I'll, I'll say it because yeah, we let's, can't let's leave them. <laughs> so in 2011, he had just finished a, uh, a, a webinar, actually uh, the Starseed webinar. It was a free webinar we were doing. And I'm in a different room. So I walked into, into the room, you know, to say, hey, good job. And he started to stand up and then he fell onto the uh, desk. What? You know, and he goes, I'm so dizzy. I'm so dizzy. Well, he started to stand up and actually there was a, what's called a do weapon, a direct energy weapon. It's like a this first one was a uh, microwave bullet. So it hit him in the neck. And that's only because he started to get up. Otherwise, it would have hit him in the temple and he probably wouldn't have made it. So it took us about three months to um, rehabilitate him. But then he started working. But he was so dizzy after that. He he, he tried everything and uh, except pharmaceutical. <laughs> he tried everything else. And nothing happened. And his blood pressure was 196 over 90. I mean, horrible. Just And every day that man walked like that. At the time, I don't think I was really understanding what was happening to his body. But um, we didn't know what had happened. And then what happened was people, we wrote and said, hey, you know, Sheldon's got vertigo. And then we started getting letters from Florida, uh, New York and England and Australia. And they said, we are, they all said something very similar. We monitor these things. He was hit with a direct energy weapon. 12 people also were, he was one of 12. And we knew two of the other two people, which I won't mention their names because it's not appropriate unless they want to tell the story. They both went to the hospital. See, Sheldon didn't go to the hospital. I took care of him. They went to the hospital Within a year, they were both dead because they had heart, open heart surgery, one had brain surgery, you know, because nobody really knew what it was. So then in 2017, Sheldon got hit again and then he couldn't walk. So we took him to the hospital because he couldn't So walk. this is an energy weapon. So a dark energy weapon, basically trying to shut him up. Essentially. Yes, okay. shut him up because by the way, um, if you know anything about Nassara Kassara, Sheldon was one of the very first people to explain it to the whole world. Oh my gosh. And okay. so you can see why he might be a, a target. Besides a lot of um, CIA and NSA people used to come to Sheldon's lectures and then they would say, okay, I want to pick your brain. I'm from the NSA, blah, 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 blah. And they would want to know, you know, different galactic information or different scientific information. Sheldon had an incredible genius brain. <laughs> and um, so anyway, uh, in 2017, he got hit again. Um, I came down the stairs for a webinar. It was, it, we were going to do a webinar that day. And he's sitting in the chair in the living room and he says, I can't walk. And I go, what do you mean you can't walk? And he goes, I can't walk. And I said, well, um, okay, raise your hand. How now, brown cow? And I'm looking at his face, seeing if he had a stroke or something, you know, I couldn't find anything. Anyway, he did the webinar. Oh my gracious. <laughs> we got him on the floor and up the stairs on his butt. Honest to God, I can't believe I, I said, you have a webinar to do. <laughs> I look back on it and I go, well, that was crazy, but he did it. So uh, and then we went to the hospital the next day or actually a week later. But um, when we were at the hospital, how I know that that is true 
-hmm. They said, we don't know why his legs aren't working. He, it looks like he had a stroke, but there's nothing that says he had a stroke. We mm -hmm. can't find anything, but, um, you know, so he, he, he needs a surgery on his back, but that isn't why he's not walking. So then uh, they said, we saw this injury on his neck. And we don't know what it is. So I called in experts. He goes, I had like 10 people coming to look at this because we've never seen one. I go, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Because I'm not going to tell them <laughs> what it is. But I'm like, okay, I just had my confirmation from 3D sources. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they're like, I'm so sorry. We don't know. But we, th this is really weird. We've never so seen So what it, what it looked like? Was it like no, a it's, burn it's or? Internal. Internal. Okay, yeah. so they did, did like an x-ray or something. They're like, yeah. we see something, yeah. but we yeah, don't know what MRI. it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so they said what we think happened was when he was in the MRI, you know, it shakes. And we think that a piece of the blood around it shook and went to his brain. Anyway, that's all they could come up with. Mm -hmm. So, but that was my confirmation, the 3D confirmation. I didn't need 3D confirmation, but that gives me the story to have 3D confirmation. Mm -hmm. that that happened to him then another then in 2019 he's in, and they were trying to go up his groin and up into his head to get a blood clot and they said this has never happened before we can't get through it's never mm -hmm. happened well that's where he got hit the second time and I know that because that's where his implant was he has an etheric implant and a physical implant which is why he had teleconferencing he could see and hear it was like um, you know teleconferencing uh, at any time if shell if you ask sheldon a question and he didn't know the answer already he could get the answer instantaneous because they were always on call with him so he was very unique that way um uh, there's others on the planet as well but he was unique and um so anyway they they said so then again i know that that's where he got hit the second time mm -hmm. and so now i've got my confirmation again that they don't understand why they can't go up there. It's never happened before. He was so apologetic. I go, it's okay. It's okay. Don't try anymore. You know, because I'm like, don't try to force yourself in there. Leave it alone. Uh, yeah. So uh, those are what happened to Sheldon. And then eventually um, he, he needed, he got what's called um, um, traumatic dementia because something traumatic happened to his brain. And so now then he got dementia and then um, then he couldn't walk again. And I, I just couldn't take care of him anymore. I took care of him for four years. Oh my gosh. So he has literally given his life for this. Literally. And the fact that you, you guys are continuing this are, okay, let me ask this. Are you concerned for yourselves? I never was. Sheldon never was. Miles, I, I think I can speak for him. He never was until just recently when I was ill. Yeah. And I thought, I'm going to go out there. And then all of a sudden, the thought came to me like, oh, maybe I don't want to do that. But <laughs> it was very <laughs> short lived because um, that's fear. And mm -hmm. I will not allow that to mm -hmm. happen. There is an important factor to consider, though. Back when Sheldon was doing his thing, he was one of not very many people who, were, who was putting out the truth. Now there's a huge number of people who are awake and putting out the truth. You're going to get them all? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> exactly. And how, what do y'all think about this? I, For me, so I've been psychologically attacked before, so I... I know what that feels like, not on the level that Sheldon. So now I'm working on being so bright that I can't be seen. And just to your point, Colleen, also, I am not going to have fear over that at all. Because if I have even an inkling of that, that leaves me open to vulnerability. Uh, so it is, it's an incredible, so I, I appreciate you guys having such an incredible strength, especially seeing that with someone who was so, um, and I'm, I'm so grateful for him and for you both as well. Cause I mean, it takes it, even what we're doing right now takes guts. I can't tell you how many people look at me now and go, Oh, you are cuckoo this COVID stuff. I, you know, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. 
And yet there's a part of me too that, that I can't, I can't stop myself. Well, I could, no, I can't, I can't stop it. Once you're awake. You can't, you can't go back. Right. And, and people who don't understand getting further and further from that as well. And that not being my reality anymore. You guys are my reality. People that are in a higher vibration because that's not only where I want to be or desire to be, that's who I am. So you guys pontificating this, being this, how this is a, and and knowing that time's a, a, a paradigm, how do you, how do y'all think we're doing? How's everybody doing with this? How's everybody doing with their vibrant doing, doing well. Okay. What does that mean? Why I say we're doing well is because everything's coming up to be looked at. So it looks ugly, (laughs) but it's coming up to be transformed. And, um, you know, I, all my friends are awake like I am. So, you know, we get together and we, you know, do meditations or, you know, we're always doing our light work and because we're not afraid to look at yes. the ugliness of that's coming up to be transformed, mm-hmm. but it's up to be transformed. That's why I say we're doing good because we're transforming it. It's easier to see a ruby or an emerald if it's sitting on top of a pile of coal. Oh, that's a neat way to describe it. That's the uh, a message I just got to describe. Yeah, this. I think that's fantastic. And and then <sighs> to add on to that, that a part of this is being able to harmonize the evil and the the God and the devil, whatever. But you have to confront it head on, and to also realize that you are all of that. That it's not separate from you, and it may look crappy. Yet you have to own you have to own it all, and that's really hard. For people to do as well. So just, um, y'all, y'all do that place <laughs> on all this stuff. Um, we're going to move into the practice in just a second. Is there anything else you guys would like to share before we do that little, little piece? Well, I just would like to say one thing about this information war that we're all being subjected to. I get excited. The more I hear the madness because the more I hear the madness, the more I realize that we're getting close to the moment in time when things are going to shift. If we didn't see it, I'd be more concerned. The fact that we can see it so blatantly shows me that we're getting closer. And I like I like that. That is how I turn something negative into a positive. That's such a good point, because there are so many things in the news right now that are so ridiculous like to the point where hopefully more people would start to see uh, specifically with the assassination that are the school shooting that just occurred and the perpetrator being seen as the victim versus the people that were shot. Um, also talking about uh, UFOs and there's also this project blue beam that's potentially, so there, there's so much out there right now. All right, Colleen, do you want to add on anything to that? Um, I'll, I will say, um, yeah, to keep our vibrations up, dancing, singing, um, praying, meditating, uh, going for a walk. A lot of people say, I can't meditate. I can't meditate. I go, oh, um, when you're cooking, how, how do you feel? Oh, I love to cook. I'm just in my element. That's a meditation. That's called an active meditation. When you go for a walk in the woods, that's a meditation. So don't be so hard on yourself. I can't meditate. I can't sit there and meditate. My mind is too on. And uh, so I, w- I want to just let everybody know that you're doing much better than you think. And um, it's really a, a a wonderful time to be alive on planet Earth. And we're actually very fortunate to be here right now. And so to enjoy the journey, and um, it does look ugly sometimes, I know that, but we're creating a new earth. So therefore we're just dismantling the old and bringing in the new. So just keep remembering that. Oh, wonderful. Take a big breath on that. All right. Shall we move into the practice? Sure. All right. Is that you, Colleen? Yeah. It is. Ready. Just be practice. Okay. 
Take a breath in and let it out. Well, you know, we do find ourselves in extraordinary period of transition in which we are preparing to make a quantum transformational leap to a higher level of consciousness. That's what we've been talking about. So forever, we're leaving behind all the experiences of fear, conflict, pain, and duality. There's no illness in the 5D, none. So we are moving into unity consciousness. We're in duality. 3D is duality. So therefore it's good, bad, ugly, beautiful. But unity consciousness, which is where we're going, is all about uh, cooperation, peace, abundance, sovereignty, and most important, creativity and love and unity. So that makes sense, right? So with all the chaos in the world bubbling up to the surface, your discernment is really essential. So as we raise our frequency and as we each hold a state of love and positive expectancy, we hone our own intuitive processes and higher consciousness to a level where we cannot be misled or confused any longer. Because of our movement into the fourth dimensional reality on our way to the fifth dimension, we are expanding um, our usual states of psychic awareness. A lot of people are a little more telepathic. Um, telekinesis is happening for a lot of people. So remember that the vibratory frequencies of love are stimulating our brains and our bodies at the deepest core of our essence. And uh, it's forcing in consciousness that demand, the, the rays of the, the, the release, I should say, the release of negative beliefs and dysfunctional behavioral patterns. Intentions are also very key. So discernment and intentions are so key to our raising of um, consciousness. You know, the ascended masters, they all practice the art of intention. Um, so, you know, study some of St. Germain's works um, because it's all about intention and create in order to create. And he uses the um, violet flame often too. So I use that all the time to transmute. So we are, we're co-creating a new world, a new earth. That's what we're here to do. So many are disconnecting with the outer happenings of the world. And uh, they're starting to focus more on what do I want to create? So start each day in joy. Start each day in joy and gratitude for life and the grand opportunity that it is before you. We are supported. So you've got angels, you've got the ascended masters, and you have a galactic medical team. So you can start um, connecting with any one of those teams. They're there to help you and to to be there for you. So life is teeming with infinite possibilities and <laughs> probabilities, right? Yes. Hey, do you mind just a second talking about the violet light? Oh, so the violet light, um, actually it's not St. Germain's. A lot of people say St. Germain's violet flame, but he'll say, no, it's the creator's violet flame that I use and learn to use. So you just say, I invoke the violet flame. I invoke the violet flame. I invoke the violet flame in through and around every cell of my body, igniting a complete healing. Or if it's for the protection of your home, violet flame, violet flame, go in and out of every room of my body, of my home and clear it of anything that is not of love. And that's how you use the violet flame. <clears throat> Yummy. <laughs> So fabulous. Y'all, thank you so much for sharing yourselves here and your wisdom. Uh, I learned a lot myself, which is really great. And is there anything else before we sign off? Yeah. Let's just take a deep breath in. Indeed. Breathing in divine love and exhaling all stress and all beliefs that no longer serve you. And inhale divine love and exhale the stress. Let's take a deep breath and energetically connect with each other. Everyone that's on this call, we create a colorful and beautiful tapestry of light all around us and all around beloved Gaia. 
take a deep breath and shine your light out into that tapestry of light, that grid of light all around the planet. Ignite your light all around the planet. Call in the star beings who are here with unconditional love from which we all come. We all came from the stars. We call on the spirits of the land who are also helping us. We call on all the ascended masters. They are helping us and all our angels. So open your hearts and feel the love of everyone on this call. We are united in love and we share a vision, a vision of heaven on earth, a vision of a graceful and peaceful ascension process. This is the time for us to reclaim our power. We are sparks of the divine. We are the co-creators. Let's co-create in unity. So be it. I'm going to open my eyes on that. <laughs> Hold on to my seat for a second because it was so, there was so much. I, I think that is a great way to close this out. Y'all, thank you so much. Thank you, Eden. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, gosh. You're kind of our maiden <gasps> voyage. <laughs> yes, that's true. Oh, oh yes. Okay. So y'all, in, in, in terms of doing podcasts and more Zooms, y'all are open to talking yes. to people, to communicating, to sharing. So I want to put that out there as well. Oh, yay. Okay. Uh, if y'all can stay on for just a second, I'll turn off the recording in just a moment. And say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Salamat job. Be in joy. So cool of you to be here. I went from being off most social media to being on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or True Social, and you might be watching this on YouTube, Rumble, or BitChute. Or you might be listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. I'm on over 19 directories at this point. So connect, comment, subscribe, like. Oh, and my intention is to have a new episode out Wednesday of each week. Oh, Lordy, more to come.